My clinics are at sea level, while other clinics might be at elevation. A question we get pretty often is, does the elevation or the altitude that you live at or treat at have an effect on the ultimate effectiveness of the actual treatment itself? We're gonna answer that question in this video. So the reason that you absorb oxygen when you breathe, even right now, it's because you're surrounded by an atmosphere. That atmosphere supplies a pressure, and that pressure is what drives oxygen from the atmosphere that you're breathing air from into your lungs, ultimately into circulation. And the process of absorbing oxygen is all about pressure gradients. At sea level, there's a pressure, we call it one atmosphere, and one atmosphere is 14.7 PSI. As you go up in elevation, it gets harder to breathe. It's harder to breathe not because the percentage of oxygen changes, air is 21% of oxygen no matter where you are on planet Earth, but what's different is the pressure. As you go up in elevation, you lose pressure, and as you lose pressure, you lose that driving force that's pushing the oxygen from the air you're breathing into your circulation. As a result, you're gonna have a lower oxygen saturation on your red blood cells. In other words, at sea level, I put a pulse oximeter on my finger, I should get a reading of 98 to 100% saturation, assuming I'm healthy, no heart issues, no lung issues. If I were to live in Denver or at elevations even higher, we know that the adaptation to that is we start to produce more red blood cells. Why? The reason is because with less pressure, we don't get the same oxygen saturation of red blood cells, meaning the red blood cells cannot carry as much oxygen in Denver as they can at sea level. As a result, the body recognizes that loss of oxygen carrying capacity, and we start producing more red blood cells. Because each red blood cell is not as full, we need more of them to carry the actual amount of oxygen we need in order to live and function normally and healthfully. So now we're gonna go into a hyperbaric chamber. As I said before, atmospheric pressure at sea level is 14.7. And so if I go into a hyperbaric chamber, let's say 1.3 atmospheres, I have to add an additional 4.2 PSI on top of the 14.7 that I'm already living at. That would be the absolute pressure. The absolute pressure is a combined pressure of the environment you live in plus the increased pressure you're getting from the chamber. Right now, if I had a chamber and nobody was in it and the chamber was off, if I looked at the gauge, the gauge would say zero. If I was using, let's just say, a soft chamber for this purposes, and I was going to 1.3 ATA, that would read the additional 4.2 PSI. If I was in Denver and I turned on that same chamber, it's eventually gonna pressurize to that exact same 4.2 PSI, except the starting pressure was less than the pressure at sea level. So the absolute pressure between those two places will certainly be lower at elevation than it would be at sea level. So the question is, does that have an effect on the actual results? It doesn't appear to. In reality, there's virtually no research that I've ever seen to compare those two to see what the differences are and does the absolute pressure actually matter? Or ultimately, is it the relative change? In other words, even though we started at two different pressures, we still added, in that case, 4.2 PSI on top of whatever that person was typically used to. From what I can tell from other clinics that we talk to and support, from other clinics that I know all over the country, all over the world, it appears that the relative change is far more important than where the absolute pressure began. So as a result, 4.2 PSI in Denver and 4.2 PSI at sea level would seem to have a very similar effect. Why? Well, I'll use arbitrary numbers for right now. Let's just say at sea level, a person has 100 red blood cells and they're 100% saturated. And right now we're driving two times the amount of oxygen into their system. We can come up with a cumulative number of how much oxygen that actually is for that person. Now we take that same person and we ship them to altitude. At altitude, their body's going to register not enough pressure for normal saturation. Therefore, I need more red blood cells to increase my carrying capacity because I can't saturate at 100%. So now instead of 100 red blood cells, this person now has 120 red blood cells. I then put them in a chamber at that same pressure, let's say, and increase their oxygen level two times. The difference between those two patients is going to be the person at sea level 
immediately began to supersaturate their plasma. Almost all of the oxygen that that patient is getting is going to be free floating oxygen dissolved in their plasma at two times greater than whatever the carrying capacity was before they were exposed to that pressure. For that patient in Denver, once they're exposed to that increased pressure, the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to saturate their red blood cells fully. So because their red blood cells have increased capacity to fill up because the pressure of the atmosphere in Denver is less, that extra oxygen first has to be driven into the red blood cell to saturate the red blood cells fully. And then whatever excess amount of oxygen will then go into the plasma of the blood. However, if we were to measure the quantity of total extra oxygen that that person is now being exposed to, if it was two times the amount of oxygen at sea level, it's also two times the amount of oxygen in Denver. It's just being carried slightly differently. Therefore, I believe that's the reason that ultimately it's not that we see changes in the results. If a patient was coming to my office for relief for symptoms associated with a TBI, it's not like we're getting great results in New Jersey, but we would get terrible results at Denver because of the altitude. I would suspect that if we treated that same person at both locations with the exact same protocol, we would get very similar, if not identical results with both patients. So while yes, it's true, patients at altitude are starting from a lower pressure, it doesn't appear to have any real consequences in terms of the effectiveness of the treatment itself. I hope that helps answer the difference between treating at sea level versus treating at elevation. It is a question we get quite a bit, especially from people living at elevations. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the content and we'll see you next time.